tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello, I did a tutorial about creating this path here, this road, and attaching the car to the to the road so it uh, winds up that winding road here with a hairpin turn. And I provide you this scene here, this modeling scene with this oh, well, pretty trivial but a nice animation of the car moving upward uh, right here. The link is in the description, and when you download the Maya scene here, you get a zip file. When you um, unpack it, you just move the Maya ASCII file into your project folder and open it. It looks exactly like this. And this part here is just, uh, well, an attempt, an orientation where the landscape could start. You could uh, make this bigger, big mountain or whatever. I just wanted to put some geometry right here. And the car, of course, is animated. So it starts down there, then it takes the first turn, the second turn, the third turn, and then it ends. And this is a loop now, so it starts again. When you look at films these days, zooming is out of the question. No zoom effect whatsoever. It was very, very fancy in the 1960s and 70s. But uh, the zooming is not interesting for us viewers, really, because the, the human eye works differently. It doesn't zoom. And cinematography is interesting in that respect that it's different from photography. And when you watch a film, any kind of film, basically the camera basically always moves, even between the cuts, it does move. So um, it's a, an art by itself to make uh, good camera motions. And uh, in this tutorial, I show you three ways to animate a camera here in context with this car. Uh, you can, for example, go to the the very first frame here, right here, and set a keyframe by pressing S. It lands down here, and then you go here to the middle and kind of, oh, oh nice motion here, nice car here. Press another time the key S here, or if you have auto keyframe uh, activated here, it uh, just does this for you. And now we're at the end of the animation up here, and there's another keyframe. Now when you watch the animation, it's really horrible. It respects the positions in between and at the beginning and the end, but um, in between those keyframes it does weird things. Actually it does not weird, do th weird things, because it just follows an optimal path. So just forget this way to animate a camera. How do we delete the key, uh, the keyframes here, by the way? We select the perspective camera here, and we go to Edit, and Delete by Type, and we delete, sorry, delete by type, the channels. Now they're gone. The camera is keyframe-less. Well, the first camera motion is really nice, because... Uh, we, we do it in basically the same way as we just did it, but um, with uh, b uh, more subtle motion. The experiment I just showed you is has a drastic camera motion. Uh, th this one won't have such a drastic camera motion, and in that case you can just keyframe the camera motion. What we'll do now is we go to View, and we create a camera from the view, and we call it Camera 1. And the camera one is active now. We have the perspective sitting somewhere there, and we can always use it, and uh, we actually will use it. But uh, the cam one is the one which is selected, which will keyframe now. And um, we go to the very beginning, and we go to view and camera settings. This is important because uh, when you activate resolution gate, you see exactly what's going to be rendered if you want to render the scene. So this is um, this is the uh, 16 by 9 factor here, and we can start with the camera right here. So let us 
set the first keyframes here. I deactivated this here, the auto key, so you see exactly what I'm doing. Um, I press S. So we start here. Now the car moves up, and I actually want to know when it's in the corner, in the bend, so I press the spacebar briefly, and here I have all the other perspectives, and here, spacebar again, I hold it, um, panels, perspective, perspective. That means here I see my new camera, this is this view, this camera sees this, and um, the car currently is there. So I think this is a good position for the car, Key, uh, it's frame 61 for the camera to move up. So I go to this view here and I move the camera up like this. And I set another keyframe with a key S. Now let us check out what's happening here. This is very nice indeed and I think we can more or less stand, stay in this position here, just maybe a little bit over here, just a tiny movement, movement, frame um, S keyframe, and then we continue here. And I think it's right over here. Let's check it here. Yes, this is where we go up and get get into the final position here. So. S. Now the animation goes like this. And I think it's a little bit too harsh, the last keyframe, from here to there. The camera moves quite a bit in short time. So what I'd rather do is I move over here in the, in the timeline and, for example, 140. 45, I set the same keyframe here, the same position, and now I jump back with this icon here to the last keyframe, and with the right mouse button, I delete it. Let's check it out. Much better. So this is a simple keyframe animation, and it is functional because the camera doesn't do strange things like going to the other side, looking uh, down on the scene, etc. If you start doing such things, uh, wild camera motions, you run into problems with this simple keyframe animation. View, create camera from the view, it's automatically called Cam2 and not Perspective2, so that's quite nice. We have the Camera2 now, it doesn't have an animation. We see the previous camera right here, and what we'll do now is we'll, we want to place the new camera on top of that car, or slightly behind that car. And of course, we do this in the perspective view here. The camera is here. This is the previous, this is cam one, this is cam two. And uh, since it's so big, it doesn't matter how we scale it down, but I want to get it into the dimensions of that car. And then I move it over here. And then I snap it, and the snapping tool is uh, the key V. I snap it somewhere over here. So it's sitting on the top of that car now. Now I need to rotate it and in order to do this more precisely I go to the attribute editor and I see the rotation here and I want to have the rotation in Y set to zero so it's exactly looking to the front and um, I want to rotate it like this so it looks a little bit ahead and move it a little bit to the side so it's basically the car itself. Now of course when I run the animation the camera stays there I need to sort of fix the camera to the car and uh, the easiest way to do it is to create a group or actually the car is a group already because it contains the car as such the red one and the wheels the four wheels that's the car group. 
So when I middle mouse drag the cam to now, middle mouse, up here into that car group. Now it's in the car group here. When I close it, it's gone here. It's right here. So middle mouse dragging it up here into the cam car group. It's a member of that group which moves all the way up. You see, it does. And when we look at the through the, that camera, that's camera 2 now, the camera on top of our car, we see this motion. It doesn't see the car because it's on top of the car. And now, of course, we're free to position it anywhere. And you can see on the right-hand side, when I move the camera back, I see the roof of the car. I co can move the camera up. No keyframe necessary here. But when I start with this position, I see always the hood of the car. Let's go further to the back. So I see the whole car. And that's like a computer game, car racing scene here. So the camera follows the car exactly. Of course, I can use keyframes. So if the camera is more interested in looking down at a certain position here, I can do this. But now I go to the camera shape and I check the focal length. The default length of all my cameras is 35 millimeters. And uh, when we reduce this to 15, we get this view here. And then the whole scene changes again because now we see the whole landscape in combination with a car. So a wide angle lens is not bad at all here. This is our camera number two. Now I'm ready to create the third camera. If you select that camera here or have that view selected here and go to create camera from view, you have a new camera which is in the group of the car, which we don't want. So let, let us undo this and um, we rather select, for example, panels perspective, the camera one here. This is our camera number one, if you remember. And when we create a new camera from that view here, it's uh, free and not in the car group anymore. You can create a camera using the create camera menu as well. So we have a camera number three now and I want to have a look where it sits. It sits right here and uh, I want the, the camera to look at the car all the time. And uh, this can be basically only done by a point constraint and uh, the point constraint needs a note for the camera where the camera looks at. And uh, this is called an aim. And we have this camera here, camera 3, with the 35 millimeter lens. And we can use this pull down menu here and change the camera from a camera to a camera with an aim. When I click on camera and aim, check out what's happening in the outliner. We get a group here. It's the camera 3 group now. And in that camera 3 group is the camera that's this thing, and the aim, which is this tiny dot here. And we'll move this dot here. When we move it, by the way, the camera rotates. This is a previous camera here. Um, and I want to constrain that aim here to the chassis of the car or to the car group. Doesn't matter where, which one because it's behaving the same way. So what I'll do is um, I select the car and then the object to constrain and uh, I could have selected it here as well so first the car and then the aim and then I go to constrain if you don't see that menu you need to go to animation here rather than rigging or whatever constrain and you have a point constraint and now you see that aim jumps to the car and it stays there all the time now this is uh, us looking through camera number three. Uh, we can move the camera now like this. And when we run this, uh, the animation, 
the camera always looks at the car. This is already quite nice. We're free to animate the position, but not the rotation of that camera 3 now. The camera 3 is right here. And you see in blue it has an input connection from in terms of a rotation and the rotation comes that restriction comes from the aim here the aim restricts our camera in the rotation so we cannot rotate the camera but we can move it so it's it's the translation is always free here so for example we can start here and set a keyframe and uh, it won't allow us to set a keyframe for all parameters, but uh, when with Shift W, W is the translation command shortcut, and with Shift W, set, you set keyframes for the translation right here. So at the beginning of the animation, the camera is here. Remember, it always follows the car. And now you can check out how nicely it follows. But it's still at that down position and we can now move the camera over here. Set a keyframe with Shift W. And now we can, for example, look at the whole thing from the top, more or less. Set another keyframe with W, S. I think that's quite cool and all we did is constrain the camera aim to that car so it always follows the car. If we go to this keyframe here we use these icons here to jump there we can go very close to the car or far away for example here this would be not manageable with a ordinary camera and keyframes because it would just get out of hand here uh, when we override the keyframe from before and press Shift W, it still works in this context here. It goes far away the camera and now it shoots back. I mean, this is pretty extreme, but just to demonstrate to you that nothing really goes wrong in this context here. It just goes far away. Remember, first way to animate keyframes with simple camera motions keyframes. The second one was we parented our camera to the car so it follows the car like on top of the roof of the car. And the third one is creating a camera with an aim and the aim follows the car and the camera is free to sit anywhere in the scene. Have a nice day. Bye bye.